our newest Saturday Live here in December uh, of the year 2023. And fun fact, I went live and I messed it up again. Every time we've gone live, we found a new way to mess up the live. And, um, and in true traditional form, we did it again. Oops, we did it again. We pressed the wrong button and lost everything. Okay, time, sorry, time. Yeah, so you probably haven't even found us. Well, okay, eight of you have found us so far. Woo, woo! Um, and the off-screen technical genius is currently on the computer letting everybody know the new location because the old location for the live was the location of the one that we messed up. They say practice makes perfect. Maybe 2024 will be our year. You never know. So for this Kid Time Story Time Saturday Live, we promised you one storytelling live storytelling, not in our usual reading room, but in the behind the scenes area of Kid Time Storytime, also known as my office. Two, besides storytelling, what else did I promise you? Oh yes, singing. There will be singing. And I will be expecting you to sing along. So I hope you've warmed up. And if not, just a few simple ah, 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 should suffice. And third, I promised stuff. And what is stuff? <laughs> Who knows what stuff is? But first, we need to take a quick break for a word from our fake sponsor, Olivia the Ostrich. Take it away, Olivia. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Storyteller. And I would like to thank everyone for joining me on this special program. Uh, it's, it's, it's my special program. Oh, yes, yes. And now a word from the sponsor, which is me. Hello. I'm world famous actress of stage and screen, Olivia the ostrich. When the holidays come, I always know the right gift to give. Olivia the ostrich's feather boas. Need a gift for your mother? A feather boa. For your abuela? Feather boa. For your mailman? Feather boa. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just a, a moment. Are, are you saying that a feather boa is an appropriate gift for your mailman? Absolutely I am, because everyone loves to feel beautiful. Need a gift for your bestie? Feather boa! Your frenemy? A black feather boa. And your choreographer? A feather boa! So this holiday season, give the gift of glamour. Give the gift of an Olivia the Ostrich feather boa. This has been a sponsored message. This has not actually been a sponsored message. And as you can see, I too have received the glam treatment. So as I did mention, I'm going to be doing a live storytelling. And one of the stories that, a couple of the stories that I love to do, uh, that I've loved to do here on Kid Time Storytime have been by an author named Troy Wilson. And he's done these incredibly hilarious stories that if you're a kid time story timer, you know, I love, I love the twisted fairy tales. They're also known out there in the world as a fractured fairy tale, which sounds strange because it sounds like the story broke, but it didn't break. What they did was they took an original story, a classic fairy tale. Let's say little red riding hood. They took a classic fairy tale. Wow. It is hard to function with a with a boa, by the way. Um, so if you do end up getting, um, you know, one of these things, just try not to eat it as much as possible. Okay. So, um, where was I? What was I talking about? Oh yes. The storytelling. So funny. I got distracted. And it's like, it's like I see a squirrel, like a dog. I'm like, what? So, um, so Troy wrote these hilarious stories that I love. Um, and, and one of them was about uh, Red Riding Hood with a twist. Little Red Reading Hood and the Miss Red Wolf. And then there was another one, Goldie Books and the Wee Bear. See, and those are all 
plays. Those are all classic fairy tales, as I was explaining, with a twist. It's it's Goldilocks, but with a twist. And it's it's Red Riding Hood, but it's Red Reading Hood. So it has a twist. And now we have a story from Troy that I'm reading for you live that mashes up. Oh, get ready for this. It mashes up Big Bad Wolf, Three Little Pigs, Red Riding Hood. Did I mention the Big Bad Wolf? And Frosty the Snowman. Psh, crazy, right? And you're going to get it right here, right now. This one actually came out in a magazine. That's why it's not a book. And that's why we get to read it here, live. <laughs> live. And it's called Fee, Fi, Fo, Frost. Oh, my gosh. I am going to inhale a feather or 10 before this live stream is done. Fee, Fi, Fo, Frost. And there, there is Big Bad himself. The Big Bad Wolf, or Bad for short, yeah, Big Bad Wolf is a lot to say over and over again, Bad for short, was not considered to be very neighborly, but we probably already knew that, partly because he was a bit of a grump, um, but mostly because he kept trying to eat his neighbors. Huh. Yeah, that would make you a bad neighbor. Now, of course, Bad wasn't always trying to eat them. He didn't try to eat them when he was sleeping. That's nice. He didn't try to eat them when he was full. There was no room. And he didn't try to eat them when he was building a snow wolf. Finally, he has a hobby other than eating his neighbors. He could sculpt a snow wolf for hours without once thinking of food. I see. What's going on here is that Big Bad, or just Bad, uh, is a bit of an artist, a bit of a sculptor. So <clears throat> it's not easy to be glamorous, let me tell you. So he's a sculptor. So when you are a sculptor, when you're an artist and you get into your art, you could just spend hours, hours. The time gets away from you. And everybody's probably very grateful that he has this hobby. So imagine his neighbor's delight when Bad decided to create his biggest snow wolf sculpture ever he spent weeks weeks barely eating a thing as he scooped and stacked and shaped oh yeah yeah the thrill of scooping and stacking and shaping is just zapping his appetite in the end his new snow wolf was taller than the tallest tree in the forest in the forest well, there's some illustrations, but I'm not going to show them to you yet. He stood back, as one does when one is admiring one's work, and said, Well, there's no way I'll ever top this one. Just then, an old silk hat huh, flew toward him on the wind. He was about to try it on when he noticed a tag inside. Frosty, it read. Frosty? The Frosty, the snowman who came to life when a hat fell on his head that was magical? Could it be the same hat? Could it be the magic hat that brought the snowman to life all those winters ago, ago, ago? There was only one way to find out. He scrambled to the top of his enormous creation, which you will see shortly, and placed the hat on its head. Welcome everyone who's joining us, continuing to find us here on our new live stream link. All 49 of you, what's up? We're mid-story. Immediately, the entire snow wolf that he just put the frosty hat on began to shudder. Shudder is like this. And heave. And heave is like this. Shudder, shudder, heave, heave, shudder, shudder, heave, heave. It's gigantic paw snatched bad off of its gigantic head like this whoa, and dangled him in front of his gigantic face. That's how big he is. You'll see him shortly. Who are you? Said the snow wolf. The icy snow wolf that he spent all those weeks stacking and scooping snow for. Well, Staring at such a towering face, it seems silly for Big Bad Wolf 
to call himself big. And maybe the word bad wouldn't make a great first impression either. You gotta think about these things when we're meeting new people. So he answered, I'm a uh, Zig Brad Wolf. Yeah, that's it. Zig Brad Wolf is my real name. But you can call me Brad for short. And who am I? Asked the snow wolf, who's basically like a baby. He's a newborn snow wolf. Um, answered Bad, or rather, Brad. You're a f- f- fee fi fo frost Yeah, that's it. Fee for short. And that's borrowing from the Jack and the Beanstalk tw- fairy tale. This is another twist that I didn't even realize. Because remember, in Jack and the Beanstalk, when he sees the giant, the giant, giant, he says, fee fi fo fum. And this guy's fee fi fo frost Oh, another twist. This is good. But either of them, before either of them could say another word, Brad's belly let out a a growl. (laughs) You know what that means, don't you? He's hungry. Oh, boy. Then it growled again. And again. It's getting worse. A sneaky grin spread across Brad's face. What's it? (laughs) You know, he's up to something not great. He licked his lips, that's so suspicious, and said, you know something, Fee, I think you're going to be a big help. Let's go visit our neighbors. Oh, my goodness. This this may not be working out the way we'd hoped. Oh, by the way, um, off-screen technical genius, the rest of the story seems to want to disappear from here. So we're just going to take a quick break. And uh, what? We have a a new sponsor? W- what is that about? Hello, I'm Witchificent, famous from things like Witchificent. And I'm here to announce that I'm coming out with a new line of bats. Yes, that's right. Bats for your bat stew. It's called Whichever Since Bat Stew. And I'm going to make it available on your fine retailers like Amazon and Witch Mart and uh, where else? Oh, yeah. Trader Bats. So find it wherever you shop for fine bats. That's that's not that's not I I didn't approve of that fake sponsor and um okay so that's what happens when you have a technical difficulty and you go to commercial break when you weren't expecting to okay so they went off to see their neighbors and i promised you i would show you the gigantic big bad brad zig brad wolf with his snow creature who we call fee for short check it out huge right i mean That's why it took him weeks. You're probably thinking, why is it taking him so long to make a snow wolf? Look at that. That's a snow tower wolf. And uh, yeah, you can't call yourself big when your towering snow wolf is holding you up 100 feet up in the air. So now he's come to life. The frosty hat is on him. And... Brad's stomach is growling and he's got something naughty up his sleeve and he wants to go visit, visit the neighbors. So off they went to see the three little pigs. (sighs) All right, said Brad. I want you to uproot that brick house of theirs, pull it out of the ground. Oh, no. And the three little pigs. You see them in the top here? Let's see if I can point it out. Right there. Little three little pigs in the house. And there is Brad enthusiastically pointing to it, to the to the fee who's so big he doesn't even fit in the picture. I want you to uproot that brick house of theirs. Pull it out of the ground. Why? So you can shake the pigs out of it. Why? 
so I can gobble them up. Well, that, that wouldn't be very neighborly, said Fee. Yeah, he's just born and he already has better ethics. Instead of uprooting the pig's house, he decorated it for them with holly and ivy and mistletoe because it's this time of year. Next, they're not done. They went to Little Red Riding Hood's house. Hey, girl, hey. Okay, said Brad. No decorating this time. Just uproot it, okay? So I can shake the people out of it? Yes. So you can gobble them up? Yes. That would be very unneighborly, said Fee. Again, with really a strong moral core, unlike his maker. Instead of uprooting Red's house, he retrieved her long lost ball from the roof. And, and then while he was at it, he brought down a basket that the wind had blown up there. <gasps> okay, I'm gonna show you the illustrations. Again, they're tiny, but I think you can see them if I show them to you. They're right there where my finger's pointing. And you see, there's little Red, and he's picking the basket up off the roof. And look at them, he's helping. He's definitely not shaking people out of their houses so you know who can eat them. That's not happening. <laughs> you make snow monsters and then they do whatever they want. Let's see. So he pulled down the basket that the wind had blown up on Little Red's roof. Got a ball that had accidentally bounced up there when they were playing. Then they went to another house. And another. And another. Brad would say, uproot it, that's an order. But Fee would refuse to uproot a single house. Instead, he continued to do neighborly good deeds, like shoveling walkways, fixing stables, and much more. He is just the best neighbor. He just moved in and he's made everything better, which is one of our life philosophies here that I hope you love too which is make things better. Don't walk around eating your neighbors and making things worse. <sighs> like you think you wouldn't have to say it, but you do. So finally, Brad, bad, Brad, he gave up. <laughs> All right, he sighed. No uprooting, let's just go home. I'm bored and hungry. When they got there, surprise, surprise. I'll show you the picture in a minute. They were surprised by what they found on their doorstep. A giant pile of gifts and thank you cards. Thank you for removing that fallen tree, said one card. Thanks for making that mini ski hill in our backyard, said another. A mini ski hill? How fun! Let's see, what else? What else? Um, uh, and, 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 and then best of all, uh, with all those thanks, People were leaving gifts, and every gift was some kind of delicious food. Pecans from the pigs, fruitcake from Little Red Riding Hood, shortbread from Little Bo Peep, who I hear has an amazing recipe. Mouth-watering delight after mouth-watering delight. Are you hungry yet? Maybe for something sweet now? Should have warned you. This story could make you crave something sweet. And now I have to deal with that too. Well, well, that's very neighborly, said Fee, who had done all the neighborly things. And for a while, Brad acted more neighborly too. Partly because he was touched by his neighbor's generosity, but mostly because they'd given him so much food that he didn't need to eat them. At least he's doing the right thing, even if he didn't really mean to. And as it turned out, Fee did uproot one house after all. What? It was abandoned. So he wrapped it up and gave it to Brad. 
A gingerbread house! Thank you, Fee! It's just what I've always wanted! <gasps> so everybody got what they wanted. They didn't get eaten, which is, I guess, opposite of what they want. It's what they didn't want is to be eaten. So they didn't get eaten, and everybody was happy and had the holiday spirit of giving and, and all the treats. And now I'll show you the picture. All the treats. Look at that. All the treats. Gingerbread men. Ah! Cupcakes. Bonbons. The shortbread is there at the bottom, and there he is eating it up. And there's the gingerbread house. And of course, right there is Fee, who's again so large that he really, he barely, there we go. Look at that. He can just peek his head into the house while Brad eats all the goodies. And that was our live storytelling. And uh, I, I know that more of you joined while I was telling the story. And if you wanted to see the top part of the story, don't worry. We actually can, uh, you can replay these later after we're done. It all like YouTube, like uploads it and makes it a video that you can watch. So you can see the beginning of the story and, um, and see our explanation of why we weren't at the link where we were supposed to be at the beginning, because we managed to once again, keep our consistent record of messing up the beginning of our live stream again. Yes, we are consistent, if anything. Okay, so I promised you a story, check. But now I promised you singing. And oh, oh, is, are those the sounds of jingles I hear? Why, yes it is. I wonder where they're coming from. It turns out that this is the season that we all sing this classic song called Jingle Bells. And it was written, if you can believe this, in like 1857. That's a 166 year old song. So I'm completely expecting you to sing along with me because you have had more than enough time to learn how to sing the song and learn all the words. I mean, maybe not the second verse. Nobody has ever really learned the second verse. And you're actually su surprised when you find out there's a second verse when you look it up on Google, which you now will. But we all know the first verse. And I do expect you all to, to sing along with me, especially Green Bear, who promised he would sing with me today. Um, yeah, I'm totally ready. <clears throat> but... But what? Um, well, okay, so I made what you might want to call a modification. Okay. Jingle Bells is a classic, so why do you feel the need to have to modify the song? Well, I mean, you just said that it's 166 years old. It probably needs some kind of an update. So all I did was I added a rap portion. Okay, we'll do it because I mean, that means that we will be having right here, right now, a world premiere of an old song with a twist, which goes along with the story that we just read with the twist. It's like we have a theme. It's almost like I planned it, but I really didn't. Um, okay, it says here. All right, all right, let's do this. So you remember how the song goes? One, two, one, two. Three, four, dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Ha ha ha! Bells on bobtail ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh song tonight. Oh, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-eyed open sleigh. Hey, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Ah, 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 Ready for your rap. Ba, la, 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 la. La 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 Now, do you know that jingle bells are sung at the holidays when we tell great stories of Santa and family fun and snowing and singing and massive toy runs whenever you are, whether near or far, we all sing together and follow that star. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Cha-cha-cha. Nice! Very nice, everybody! 
Thank you. I had to hoist up Green Bear there because he can't. Hmm. It's not tall enough to reach the camera yet. Yet. Almost all of us here are getting taller every day. Almost all of us. Some of us may have maxed out at 12. So let's see. Let me think now. There's so much going on here and I'm doing this all live. So I need to look at my notes because ugh, I, I need to make sure that I give you everything you want. First of all, I need to make sure that I give a big bravo to all of you who sang. Thank you very much. I, I know I couldn't exactly hear you, but I could feel you. So we promised storytelling. Check. We promised singing. Check it, check. We promised stuff, but I need to figure out still what that stuff is. So I'll be right back after this. You ready? Commercial break. Hello, everybody. I am Baticus Finch. Are you a bat? Have you suffered harassment, bat napping, or attempted cooking by a certain witch? If so, you may be entitled to compensation. I'm Baticus Finch, bat attorney at law, and I'll get you the bat coin you deserve. Call 555 Bat Bats. That's 555 Bat Bats, and get Baticus Finch on your side. Se habla espanol. We have a lot of lawsuits flying around here recently. And we're back! And now we have the stuff. What is the stuff, Storyteller? Oh, I'll tell you. It's the right stuff, too. We have fan mail. Just two pieces of mail that I have decided to pull from beneath the deepest depths of my desk. It's very heavy with stuff right now. And these... Oh, you're going to love this. These come from as far away as... Langford, Bedfordshire, in the United Kingdom. Yes. I mean, I think I said it right, Bedfordshire, but it really, to my American eyes, looks like Bedfordshire, which would make everybody in England laugh at me. Oh, well. So Bedfordshire in Langford in the UK and the other one from far, far away in a land called Irwin, North Carolina. Let's begin with the UK letter, shall we? It came from so far away. It must be exhausted from all that flying. Right away, I'm already seeing Dill. He's probably off somewhere on his one-eyed open sleigh. And it says all this, all this. I'm going to just try to read this right, right now, right here, right now. Uh, dear Storyteller, the videos that I like are A Little Spot of Love, Green Bear for President, I Want to Be in a Book, and many more. Uh, let's see. Would you invite me around and we can have a chat? Love, Max, age seven. P.S. This is my drawing of Red Bear. Right there. P.S. My full name is Maxwell Arthur. That's very regal. Max, you sound like you can be a king of something. Maybe you could be the king of Langford. Wait, is it Langford? Yes, I said it right. The king of Langford. Bonus note, there is a pickle in the back. Oh, we saw that bonus right away. Note, I also watched A Little Spot of Courage. You probably saw some of those as well. And um, Green Bear for President is soon to be classic. Indeed. Thank you for sending me this letter all the way from the UK. Oh my gosh, Max. I loved it. It even says by airmail. It's so cool when I see that stamp because, you know, that's only from, you know, letters from far away. And now the next one from the exotic lands of Irwin, North Carolina. And this is from Mateo. And Mateo uh, sent me a thank you note because I recently sent him a book because we do book giveaways, you know? Um, and if you don't know about that, they are uh, posted in the community page here on YouTube, but I also post it on our Facebook page and our Instagram account. So if you're a kid watching, um, you can tell your grown up to follow those because if you want to have them enter, you know, because I always have the grown ups enter for the kids. Um, 
because your school email addresses, by the way, they don't work. I've tried. They keep outside emails out to, you know, to protect you. So that's cool. So that's why I say to have the grown up submit. Yeah. Okay. Here's what Mateo wrote. Um, okay. So dear storyteller, thank you for the books. Love Mateo, but he includes a fabulous joke for all of us. Now to understand something, oh, my boa coming apart. Oh, Olivia would not approve. Okay. So what Mateo won were two pirate book giveaways. So here is the joke. What is a pirate's favorite subject at school? Anybody? A pirate's favorite subject at school? Anybody know? Oh, pirating? I mean, that was a good good guess. Um, but no, not pirating. Anybody? Last last chance. Favorite subject at school of a pirate? I would say pillaging and plundering 101. I mean, that that sounds like it would be a good answer, but no. The answer to what is a pirate's favorite subject at school is art. Get it? Art. And that kills at pirate parties, let me tell you. Also, I think I ate another feather. Okay, so I have fulfilled my promise. We went live because you asked for it. Uh, I gave you a live story. And if you loved that live story, you can replay it again here. But also, Troy wrote the little red reading hood, and you can find that on the channel right now. And Goldie Books, too. Fabulous, twisted fairy tales that we love. Um, we gave you a song with a world premiere rap for Jingle Bells attached to it. So now you can learn that and make your Jingle Bells unlike anybody else's Jingle Bells again. I gave you stuff. Stuff in the form of letters, art, and jokes from around the world, from all the way from North Carolina to UK up there. No, this, oh, I forget which, I forgot which direction the UK is in. Uh, I'm in California, so I know, I do know that it's eight hours away. So for those of you all the way eight hours away in the future, hey, how's the future? Is it bright? I hope so. So I've given you all that. I read you. So you got the storytelling, the singing, and the stuff. And it is December. So some of my Jewish Kid Time Storytimers are going to be celebrating Hanukkah next week. So happy Hanukkah. And then we here and a bunch of you all are going to be celebrating Christmas soon. So Merry Christmas. And then, oh! We're getting it all. It's that time of year, y'all. We're going to get happy Kwanzaa, happy New Year's Eve, happy New Year's Day, happy Three Kings Day, happy 2024, right around the corner. So ring out 2023 brightly and in style. And remember, accept that mantra that we all have here of making things better everywhere you go with a smile and with the big heart that you have. All right. I guess for now it's ciao for now from kid time story time world headquarters maybe we'll come back live to you again in 2024 it just depends on what i hear from you and if i ever learn to figure out how to do this thing the right way the first time then again it's become a tradition to mess up the beginnings of our lives so maybe we'll keep that going you never know ciao for now everybody